Honorable Chairman Joy Conception of the ASEAN Business Advisory Council, ASEAN Business Leaders, nice to meet you all. Thank you very much for inviting me to such a valuable event. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the ASEAN. Until now, ASEAN has achieved sustained growth through liberalization of trade and investment and has helped maintain regional peace and stability through security cooperation. And end of 2015, it has established the ASEAN community. Differences in cultures, languages, and development gaps have been overcome, and thus it's an ever more meaningful achievement. The ASEAN community consists of a population of 630 million people and a GDP of 2.5 trillion U.S. dollars. Its median age is 28 and annual growth is 5 percent. It is a young, vibrant and a market with great potential. ASEAN and South Korea are important partners for each other. ASEAN is South Korea's second largest trading partner and investment destination. South Korea is also ASEAN's fifth largest trading partner. However, it's not only limited to simply economic reasons. ASEAN and South Korea share similar experiences, and throughout the past history, we've become friends of great support. Overcoming the pains of civilization, we, all, we are walking the same path of democratization and economic growth. When Korea was going through pains of the war, ASEAN member states have extended their help. During the Cold War, standing in between strong powers, we experienced the difficulty of securing, securing our survival and self-existence. During the Asian financial crisis, we also overcame the difficulty by helping each other. I myself and my administration wish to be closer friends with ASEAN. We will upgrade our cooperation to the level of four major countries surrounding the Korean Peninsula. As the first measure, right after my inauguration, I dispatched a special envoy to major ASEAN nations. And here today, based on our valuable historical experiences and our visions, I would like to denounce the South Korea ASEAN Future Community Doctrine. In my opinion, our future is a 3P community. It's a people community where people connect with people and hearts connect with hearts. It's a peace community that contributes to Asia's peace through security cooperation. It's a community of co-prosperity co where everyone are well off through mutual economic cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, I will carry out people-oriented diplomacy. My political philosophy puts people first. It's in the same line with ASEAN community's vision of people-oriented and people-centered. In order to share our future together, we need to first become friends that understand each other. To this end, I will expand people-to-people -people exchanges among the leaders of the countries, governments, corporations, and students. Above anything else, within my term, I will visit all 10 ASEAN countries and share deep friendship. Frequent encounter and exchanges among the citizens will become the starting point. I will make it easier for ASEAN citizens to visit South Korea by reviewing the visa system. I will also significantly expand the scope of government level scholarship and training programs for ASEAN students. And I will intensify the capabilities of ASEAN SME employees by providing support for technical, vocational and education training. I hope our youth can help us study together through exchange and grow into leaders of the future. In September, in my hometown, Busan City, we established the first ASEAN Culture House among ASEAN partners. 
It also houses the world's first digitalized Angkor Wat. It will contribute greatly to facilitating understanding of ASEAN for South Korean citizens. Established back in 2009, the Korea ASEAN Center carries out trade expos and consulting to help ASEAN firms enter the South Korea market. Moreover, the Korea ASEAN Business Council and Korea Mekong Business Forum and other business exchanges between the two parties will also be facilitated. My administration aims to establish a pen government ASEAN task force to provide comprehensive support for cooperation with ASEAN. We will also strengthen the business support function of diplomatic offices situated in ASEAN countries. Secondly, we will make a peace community where all citizens are safe. There are 500,000 ASEAN citizens living in South Korea, and annually 6 million Koreans visit uh, the ASEAN. The expansion of people-to-people -people exchanges and the economic cooperation itself is a very crucial reason for each other's safety and peace. I will propose the development of a community uh, for peace that becomes great help in time of crisis, moving beyond a community of mutual co-prosperity. Our peace community together with the four strong powers around the Korean Peninsula will develop into an important pillar to lead as Asia's peace and prosperity. To this end, we will strengthen cooperation in areas of defense, security, cooperation and defense industry. Moreover, North Korea's nuclear and missile provocations, terrorism and extreme violence and cyber threats will be tackled together. Thirdly, we will push forward mutual cooperation for all. I support mutual economic development. This is also the philosophy of people-centered economy that South Korea's new government aims for. The benefits of free trade shall be enjoyed by both parties. Increasing the number of local laborers and not simple investment should be valued, and investment should support the development of the respective industries through technical exchanges. In the process of its growth, South Korea has experienced numerous trials and errors and have overcome them. ASEAN member states that strive to achieve growth are the optimal partners for South Korea to share such know-hows and experiences. ASEAN and South Korea have great potential for cooperation. Above anything else, I would like to suggest the four major areas of cooperation that can enhance regional connectivity which is sought after by ASEAN. The first area is transportation. In Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh of Vietnam, South Korea is constructing their metro systems. In Jakarta, Indonesia, we are also carrying out light rail transit project. Seoul's metro system, which is globally renowned, has solved the transportation problems while South Korea experienced its economic development. Together with ASEAN, South Korea will ponder upon issues of overpopulation and transportation in big cities. Construction of high-speed railway among ASEAN member states will also help accelerate regional unity. South Korea's experiences of constructing and operating quality high-speed railway will also be shared with ASEAN countries. The second area is energy. South Korea is carrying out the construction of power plants in Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia and the Philippines. As members of the Paris Treaty, ASEAN and South Korea can cooperate more in the energy field. The Energy Island Project in Batam, Indonesia is expected to lay out the future of renewable energy cooperation. The third area is water resources management. 
in Thailand's Hue Ruan River development and Laos Senam Noi water power plant, Philippines Luzon region and Bulacan region, Indonesia's Garian region are also being carried out by South Korea. We will also share our know-hows and management of our water resources with uh, these countries. The fourth area is smart IT technology. Korea boasts high level of uh, IT infrastructure, and based on this, we are carrying out to the uh, industrial smart uh, smart industry. And the fourth industry revolution will be based on the fifth generation mobile communication network, and this will be tr uh, made into trial in the Pyeongchang Olympics for the first time and will be supported in the uh, next year's Asian Games in Indonesia. We are also carrying out smart cities. The smart nation of in Singapore will also be participated by South Korea, and our know-hows will also be shared with other countries. Economic development should be supported by finance, and South Korea will also significantly increase the fund for ASEAN-related rela funds. Korea ASEAN Cooperation Fund will be increased by two folds by 2019 to $1,400 annually. The South Korea Mekong Cooperation Fund will be expanded to by three folds. Korea ASEAN FTA Cooperation Fund will also uh, be used to utilize free trade. By 2020, our mutual trade, the size of our trade will be uh, achieved to uh, 20, $200 billion. And in order to support the four major areas of cooperation which I have just laid out, we will increase uh, the Global Infrastructure Fund by 2022 to 100 million U.S. dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, this year marks the 50th anniversary of the establishment of ASEAN and the 20th anniversary of ASEAN Plus 3 and the 10th anniversary of the signing of the FTA between Korea and ASEAN. I will mark this opportunity to share my doctrine with other leaders of ASEAN countries. And what's more important is the cooperation and participation of uh, the both uh, citizens. And I believe that your help is more is essential. And the South Korean government will always support the businesses and activities of all of you. In just three months, in South Korea's Pyeongchang, we will hold the Winter Olympics and the Paralympics. In order to dis deliver the message of peace, uh, during the Olympics, we are preparing the event. Uh, we have carried out many sophisticated ICT technologies, including self-driving bus, 5G uh, communication network. Uh, please visit uh, Korea's Pyeongchang and come to Korea to enjoy the beautiful winter and diverse cultures and enjoy uh, the IT technology and discover new business opportunities. I ask for your support. Thank you very much.